Well, good evening, family and friends. I'm Minister John Pickens, and I would like to thank you all for joining me tonight for this midweek's Wednesday Word of God. Amen. I have to start uh, by always giving honor and thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins and commissioning me to preach his word to his people all around the world. Amen. Well, tonight's scripture and text will be coming from the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. That's the book of Joshua, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. I will begin at verse 1. The destruction of Jericho. Now, Jericho was securely shut up uh, because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Amen. May the Lord bless both the hearers and doers of his word. Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Lord. We want to say thank you. We want to say thank you, Lord, and ask for forgiveness today. We want to ask for forgiveness, Lord, for any and all wrongdoings that we have been engaged in, not just with our physical body or our physical mouth, Lord, but even our minds, our intent, Lord, our heart. Heavenly Father, we pray that you continuously cleanse us, Lord, continue to cleanse us and to protect us, Lord. We thank you for protecting us all from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we want to thank you, Heavenly Father, for this gathering, this fellowship tonight, uh, as we receive your word, I pray today, Lord, that the words from my mouth, Lord, are your words and not my own. To go forth, Lord, to grow, to sprout forth seed and to grow trees, Lord, to bring forth the fruit that you have called for us to bring forth. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again, brothers and sisters, for joining me uh, for this evening's word of God. Amen. Now let us take our mind off of everything and everyone and let us place it on Jesus Christ. Amen. Now. I'd like to speak with you a few minutes, a few moments this evening concerning a message to follow the Lord's instruction. Amen. No matter what, no matter how hard things seem, always follow the instructions of the Lord. Amen. Now, Joshua battles for the promised land. Joshua is the son of Nun. He had been placed in leadership in the position of leadership over the Hebrews by Moses at the Lord's command following Moses' death. Now, Joshua immediately took command and heeded the instructions of the Lord to meditate on his word both day and night, not to depart from it. Now, Joshua would go on to lead the Hebrews to many victories towards uh, the land that God promised Abraham and all of his descendants. Now, as we know, Joshua's battles would involve both victory and defeat. However, the reoccurring and the resounding theme from today's scripture and text is about life for all of us, that no matter what, to follow the instructions of the Lord. Amen. Now, doing so is the key to both victory and defeat in life. Now, God the Father, is the creator. He is the creator. He's the creator of all there was, all there is, and all that is to come. Now, again, God created all things. The book of John chapter one, verse three says very clearly, all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. So it's very clear. God created everything, brothers and sisters. Now, since God created everything, every place and every one that you or I could ever think of, dream of, or even comprehend or imagine, um, it should go without saying, uh, right, that he understands everything. He understands even the most complicated four-letter word that we know, life. Amen. He knows more than we do because he created everything. Yet we still spend our entire lives, all of us do, trying to resist his call and his plan and will for our life. Because why? We are intent, brothers and sisters. We are intent to live the way that we want to live, or as we all call it today, living our own truth. Now, uh, if we want to truly have an abundant life, we must learn to follow the one who created life. Now, it may be tough to see the full picture where we are in the midst of our circumstances, trials, and tribulations. Um, as a matter of fact, all of us at some point have, have been in or experienced some sort of devastating pain that uh, has been so devastating, we can no longer think straight. We can't think straight until the pain goes away, until the pain subsides. Well, brothers and sisters, God knows that these types of days would come to affect all of us, uh, which is why he does not require us to understand all of his ways. He does not require us to understand all of, all of his strategic uh, strategic patterns, his strategies, or anything. He just requires to do one thing for us to do what? To trust and obey. Now, the book of Proverbs chapter five, 
uh, chapter three, verses five is very clear. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. So brothers and sisters, God created the heavens and the earth, but somehow we've all convinced ourselves that we know more about our situations than he does. We know more about life than he does. Now, no man or woman ever, uh, ever that has ever lived knows more about marriage than God does. Uh, no one knows more about relationships than God does. No one knows more about making money, uh, creating businesses, partnerships, relationships than God does. God, no one knows more than warfare, amen, fighting the enemy than he does. Raising children, no one knows more about raising children than he does since he created all of us as his children, amen. No one knows how to build a successful career, and especially no one knows how to build a kingdom, a kingdom that will last forevermore, but God does, amen. Yet still, Oftentimes in life, we uh, refuse to follow his instructions. We refuse to follow his word. Why? Because we think we know more than he does. If we don't say it, our actions implies it. Now, the Lord delivered Jericho to Joshua without the Hebrews even drawing their swords. Verse two, verse one and two tells us very clearly. Now, Jericho was securely shut up uh, because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho unto your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. Now, the Lord went out ahead of the children of Israel, brothers and sisters, before the children of Israel even knew there would even be a battle to fight. God had already went forward ahead of them and secured the victory. Now, uh, this is precedent. This sets a precedent for all of our life and throughout God's word. You see, in the book of Deuteronomy, God was very clear with Moses when he conveyed his laws. He told him very clearly, if you obey all of my laws and all of my covenants, I will send your enemies fleeing from you seven different ways. Now, God is conveying to Joshua the same thing today, uh, that the battle has already been won. The hard work has already been done. All they have to do is follow his instructions. So one of our greatest challenge, brothers and sisters, is not what we think it is. Perhaps our greatest challenge is not actually about simply getting over that wall, passing that exam, trying to uh, clear the glass ceiling many of us are trying to break in our lives. But really, our greatest challenge of all is trusting in God, obeying and following his instructions. Now, understand something. With God, uh, when it comes to strength, it's not about numbers. Never has been, amen, and it has, ne never has been, amen, never will be. Uh, you see, Jericho's uh, men of valor were mighty men. They were a very strong army at that time. Their walls were very fortified and very well known and infamous around the land. Yet, uh, the literal fear of God had been placed uh, by the Lord into all of those men. Now, you see, brothers and sisters, um, by our metrics in warfare, strength is in numbers, and rightfully so. The more men you have, the more soldiers you have, the more strategic advantage you have in battle, the more you can plan and operate uh, various sorts of uh, strategies. But you see, brothers and sisters, with God, uh, rarely uh, the Hebrews, rarely did the Hebrews ever outnumber. They were pretty much always outnumbered whenever they fought the enemy, and yet the Lord still brought them victory as long as they did what? As long as they followed his word. And followed his instructions. Now, as spoken about before, uh, pertaining to the Philistine army, the Philistine army was very strong, very mighty. Um, and Goliath was a perfect representation of the sizable difference between Saul's army and their own. Uh, yet God still used one shepherd boy. He didn't call someone that had 100 years of uh, military martial arts type training. No, he called a shepherd boy, amen, with five smooth stones and a slingshot to go forward to carry forth his will. Now, Jesus Christ, um, although he was one man, he would cast out legions of demons inside of people, both men, women, and children all the time. God would use Gideon, as we know the story of Gideon and his trumpet, uh, with 300 men to go forth to subdue all of his enemies. Uh, God, as we had just previously spoken about, he used five loaves and two fish to feed thousands upon thousands of men, women, and children. So you see, brothers and sisters, um, God does not need numbers, amen, the same way we do to succeed or to accomplish anything. Uh, the thing he requires of us is not numbers. He requires obedience. Amen. Now, God gave specific instructions to Joshua, very specific. Verse three says, you shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go around the city once. You shall do this six days. Now, although God had delivered Jericho into the hands of Joshua and his men, there were still very important instructions that they had to follow. Now, oftentimes it appears we are all going around in circles in our life, dealing with the same problems over and over and over again. Um, think about it. You quit one job only to find yourself dealing with the same type of people that you just left uh, within the old job. You're now dealing with them in the new job. Uh, you quit one relationship 
to find another relationship, only to find yourself still dealing with the same exact problem, uh, just like what you had previously left. Now, could it be, could God be communicating to us, brothers and sisters? Could he be communicating to you and to me today in all of his word? Amen. Now, very clearly, uh, marching around the wall six times is very symbolic. Uh, it's symbolic of not simply about going around in circles because or you failed something six times plus over again. But rather, God is trying to communicate to us something very clearly, brothers and sisters. His ways are not our ways. And just as he created the world in six days, amen, and he rested on the seventh day, uh, he's going to do the same thing with Jericho. They're going to march around that wall six days. And on the seventh day, the walls of Jericho will rest down flat. Amen. Now, Joshua's army would have to deal with the ark in front. Amen. Verse four says very clearly, and seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horn before the ark. Now, the Lord gives another very interesting instruction to Joshua. He tells Joshua that the ark of the Lord must be carried in front with seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Amen. The ark has to be before the army. Now, God did not tell Joshua's men that they needed to hit the gym or to outwork uh, the men of Jericho in the bench press or to get a specific hand-to-hand -hand combat training, or to outmuscle Jericho, or to get another degree, to, again, to outsmart the Jericho, the men of Jericho. Nor did they need a other type of weapon. They didn't need a particular type of machine gun or bomb or anything of that nature. He said very clearly, no, just carry the ark. Carry the ark. Carry my word before you. Amen. Now, when we're advancing onto the enemy's territory, brothers and sisters, we must, we must understand something very clearly. We must go forward with God's word first before us. Amen. We must be in relationship with him. Amen. In order for us to succeed in the things of God. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 12 through 16, is, it's a very interesting situation that's taking place. This references the sons of the Jewish priests attempting to cast out demons, stating that in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, their speech indicates very clearly that they did not preach Jesus, nor his word, nor that they were in relationship with him. They said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, not who we preach, not who we believe in, not who we have a relationship with, not who we are in covenant with, but who someone else preaches, who someone else is in covenant with. You see, that evil spirit broke, spoke to them, then stating, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? The possessed man then went forward to overpower all the men, beating them literally naked, through the streets. This illustrates very clearly, brothers and sisters, that when we are advancing into the enemy's territory, we must be in covenant with the Lord ourselves. Amen. We cannot be in covenant through our mom, through our dad, through anyone else, through our brothers and sisters. We ourselves must be in covenant with the Lord. Now, the enemy uh, will not be overcome by your strength. The enemy will not be overcome with your beauty, your talents, your gifts, your degrees, your intellect, your genders. He's not going to be overcome by those sorts of things. You see, the enemy does not care whether you're male or female. He wants all of us defeated and destroyed just the same. Now, the seventh day involved, again, seven rotations, very specific. The scripture goes on to say, but on the seventh day, you must march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets. Now, six rotations for six days, seven rotations on the seventh day. You see, the Lord uses numbers far differently than we do. His mathematics is much different than our mathematics. Amen. Now, we use numbers to arrive, as we talked about before. Uh, at specific calculations or to solve particular types of problems. We use formulas, various formulas to solve for X or to solve for Y, solve for the perimeter, the volume, X, Y, and Z. Now, oftentimes we use addition by subtraction. We have to add things to in order to reduce a load, or we have to multiply by dividing. We have to do all of these different things. We look for patterns in the numbers all the time. And in doing so, sometimes we end up falsely understanding God's ways because we're trying to understand all of the numbers that are surrounding his pattern. Now, the reality is, the miracle is, uh, it's not that there is a simple number symbol, symbolism in the numbers of rotation, but rather it's, it's simple obedience. Simple obedience to God's word. That is what he's trying to convey to Joshua. So if God told Joshua, march around the wall eight times or nine times or 10 times, the glory was not in the number of times that Joshua had to march. It was the glory was in God telling him in uh, Joshua obeying the number of times that he said. So he told him six times in six days, seven times on the seventh day. The fact that Joshua obeyed, that's a man. That was the glory of God. It wasn't a simple number of how many days he had to march, but rather uh, whether or not he obeyed. And he did. So we oftentimes get that confused in our life. We search the scriptures trying to look for patterns. Not that there are not patterns. 
However, the thing that he wants us to understand very clearly is what? Obey. Don't be foolish into thinking that we can understand every single thing uh, that the Lord has by simply trying to figure out what the numbers mean. Uh, but there is a better way. Obedience. Amen. Following the instruction of the Lord. Now, the Lord works in mysterious ways, and he will not always deliver us the same way out of one situation, just like he delivered us out of the previous situation. Which This is why trying to always find patterns in the numbers is not always going to tell the full tale. You see the word of God more than once. It supports, uh, which is why Jesus uh, healed uh, the sick different ways. He did not heal the same person every single time the same way. Uh, oftentimes he would heal by touching. Oftentimes he would heal the sick by speaking to them. Sometimes he would heal the sick and the blind by spitting on the ground, uh, mixing his uh, spit with uh, the ground with clay, creating clay to heal the eyes. Amen. Or he would heal simply through faith, through the faith of a soldier, through the centurion, uh, his faith, amen, his servant was healed. Now, as the Hebrews marched towards the promised land, the Lord dried up the Jordan bed, amen, the Jordan of river. He dried up the bed. He did it differently than the way he instructed Moses to stretch out his staff towards the Red Sea. You see, we cannot figure out the Lord, amen, simply through the patterns of the numbers or any other pattern that we think. Uh, the only thing we can do, brothers and sisters, is accept, amen, accept that we're not going to always understand his ways and that he is trying to communicate us uh, the same message he has been trying to communicate us, uh, communicate to us since the Garden of Eden, which is obey, amen, obedience. Now, the Lord says very clearly in 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 2, verses 30, those who honor me, I will also honor, but those who despise me will be disdained. Amen. Now, obeying God's instruction will bring down the walls of oppression around you. It may take some time, brothers and sisters, but the walls, rest assured, the walls will come down. Now, verse five says very clearly, it shall come to pass. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the walls of the city will fall down flat. Amen. And the people shall go up every man straight before him. Now, the people of Jericho, brothers and sisters, they were already afraid of the Hebrews because God made it so. Now, marching around the wall six times on six days and marching around the wall seven times on the seventh day, uh, that's simply enough. And blasting with the ram's horn and shouting, that, was not, that did not simply cause the walls of Jericho to come down. Structurally, scientists and engineers would look at that and say, well, that would actually be somewhat impossible simply just to march around a wall seven times on the seventh day and to scream as loud as you can, that is not going to simply bring down a structure. Amen. But how do we, how would, how would this happen, brothers and sisters? Now, I'm quite sure if you, again, if you took the best engineers and the best architects around the world, they would all conclude the same thing, that it's not going to happen simply by marching around a wall seven times and uh, yelling uh, with, a, with a mighty shout and blowing your trumpets. That alone is not going to bring down the walls of the enemy. But again, brothers and sisters, God's ways are not our ways. You, say, you see, he says in his word very clearly, he will use what we deem as foolish here on earth for his wisdom and the things that we deem as wise, amen, he considers that foolish, amen. So victory and success is a process, amen. It's not simply a title, a position of being or something that you achieve or just get to. It's, it's a process, brothers and sisters. Now we live again in a modern age, in a day and age where everyone wants to reach the top. We all want to reach that glass ceiling. We want to reach the top of the mountain. We want to break the glass ceiling. Amen. We want to be at the top of the mountain all by ourselves. But you see, brothers and sisters, the problem is nearly uh, not enough emphasis is being conveyed to the younger generation uh, that leadership and victory and success is not simply about talent. It's not simply about your IQ. It's not simply about being gifted. It's not simply about uh, what you can achieve uh, uh, in, in the books. No, the mantle of leadership is about accountability. It's about responsibility. It's about integrity. And in many cases, self-sacrifice. You're sacrificing yourself the things that you want to do, amen, your personal time, the things that you love, amen, sacrificing those things, amen, that's what the, the mantle of leadership is really about. You see, these are not traits that you can learn or acquire overnight. These are not traits that you can learn simply from a book. Um, you can take a course in leadership, but the course that you're going to have to take in order to prove that your leader is the one called life, amen. Now, again, this is not a status. This is not uh, something that you can simply achieve and put on a resume bulletin to make ourselves feel good. No, leadership is a very serious thing and victory and success comes from following God's instructions. Amen. Now, Joshua and the Israelite army, uh, they achieve victory. They achieve victory simply not because of their military training or their advanced weaponry, because they were outmanned and outweaponed and outgunned in every way. 
uh, nor did they achieve victory by exalting themselves because they were God's people. They didn't go around saying, we are the most anointed. Everyone bow down before us because we are bigger. We are holier. We are better than everyone else around us. No, that's not how they achieve victory. They achieve victory by humbling themselves, humbling themselves before the throne of the Lord, meditating on his word both night and day and following God's instructions. And if we stand strong during the test, brothers and sisters, God, rest assured, will do the rest. Amen. Now, facing the adversity in life uh, won't always end in a positive outcomes because uh, you're simply good at your job. Uh, the Lord wants us to acknowledge very clearly uh, we must have him first in all that we do. It's not about us being good at what we do. We must acknowledge him first. Again, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 18 says very clearly, give thanks to the Lord, uh, amen, for everything that is happening in your life. Why? This is his will for all of our lives, to constantly give thanks. So it's good to understand, brothers and sisters, that it's not merely a merely suggestion, uh, but rather this is an instruction from the Lord. God's instruction and success for Joshua were not optional, but indeed conditional. You see, if Joshua and his army obeyed the Lord, the Lord would deliver. However, if they did not obey, they would fall into the hands of the enemy. So you see, God's love is unconditional, brothers and sisters. He said he will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. Amen. But every single reward or blessing is not unconditional. Amen. Now, there are some blessings such as waking up in the morning, being able to breathe, being able to see, taste, touch and smell. Those are things that oftentimes we take for granted, uh, and even though we experience these things every single day. Uh, and why is that? So since God gives us these these types of amenities every single day, yes, being able to see, being able to speak, being able to hear. These are things that we take for granted. And yes, they are amenities. Amen. These are blessings from the Lord. Uh, but you see, he provides these things to many of us, if not most of us, unconditionally every day, so much that we oftentimes take them for granted. Now, however, all blessings, as I just mentioned, all blessings and reward are not unconditional. So you see, the Lord is making it very clear, just as he did to the Hebrews in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, that if they obeyed the instructions of the Lord, then all these blessings would fall upon them. Now, there are some things that we pray for without knowing. Uh, they are conditionally based. That's why we don't all, always get every single thing we pray for. And as we know, sometimes the answer is no, for our own good. You see, the promised land, brothers and sisters, would not have been taking a man without a fight. Now, however, if you look closely, amen, the battle for the promised land that Joshua had already been, it, it had already been won. Amen. The battle was already won. Amen. All Joshua had to do before he even drew his sword was to follow the instructions of the Lord. Now, the Lord ensured victory for Israel no matter how tough the enemy was, victory was going to be assured as long as what? They followed the instructions of the Lord. Uh, and in doing so, how did they actually follow his instructions? By first and foremost, doing what? Carrying the ark forward. Amen. They carried the ark of the Lord, the word of God beforehand. Now, uh, they were told again not to shout until the appointed time. They, gave, they were given specific instructions. Don't say anything until this specific time. Verse 10 says, now Joshua had commanded the people saying, you shall not shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say unto you, shout, then you shall shout. Amen. Now, in previous messages, uh, we've been talking about loose lips sinking ships. Now, all of Joshua's armies obeyed his command. They did not talk. They did not make noise, nor did they reveal the uh, Lord's plan to the enemy. Now, sometimes we just have to do uh, this is sometimes the hardest thing for us to do, which is what? to keep quiet. Amen. We have to reveal everything that we know, brothers and sisters. Uh, but as the scripture is conveying to us today, amen, if we decide to disobey, amen, the instructions of the Lord, then instead of blessings overtaking us, then yes, it is very possible curses and defeat is going to overtake us. So let uh, not that happen to us today, brothers and sisters. Let us obey the voice of the Lord. Let us obey. Let us follow his instructions, just as Joshua and the Israelites have done. Amen. Um, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ today, uh, please, I encourage you to have one. Please do not wait until tomorrow. Amen. Tomorrow is guaranteed to no man. Amen. You do not need to go to a physical building. You do not, you do, you do not need to seek anyone out. Amen. The person you need to communicate is already there with you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through his Holy Spirit. So pray with me today. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Heavenly Father, today for all those who have been gathered here for your word. And we pray today, Lord, for those that seek a relationship with you today. We pray today, Lord, that they invite you into their hearts and minds, Lord, and confess with their mouth and believe in their heart that you are uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and that you came and lived and died and rose again for the remission of all of our sins. 
Amen. And we want to thank you today, Heavenly Father, for this word that you have given forth, Lord, through my mouth for all of our sakes today. And we just pray, Lord, for those that have paid, prayed that prayer and that they may not have previously had a relationship with you, Lord. We, we know and believe right now by faith that they now have a relationship with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray today. Amen, amen, and amen. Again, thank you all for joining me, brothers and sisters, for the word of God tonight. Amen. I am Minister John Pickens, and I thank you again for joining me for this midweek's word of God. Amen. Have a very blessed night.